Hi, you guys. Boom. Ooh, okay. Let's see if some people are going to come and join me today. Well, tonight is night. I hope you guys are having an awesome Sunday. You can get some rest. Oh my gosh. We're not doing any requests, guys, to go into the live. I just want you guys to sit back and listen to me talk. That's all I ask. If it's not too much. So, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on my, I don't know, what do we call it? Farmer's Market Show? This is like my third Farmer's Market I participated in. And to be honest with you, I was very, 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 very nervous at first. I was extremely nervous at first when I did it. I almost didn't do it because there were other soapers there. So I became a little self-conscious about it. Even though, like, I know my products are really good. If I could just be honest with you guys, sometimes I get a little bit nervous when um, I'm around other soapers. I don't know why. I think I know why, but I'm just not going to go into that. But I just want to come on here and just, like, tell you guys what happened at the farmer's market. So, I got there, and you know what? No, I'm going to tell you guys what happened, and I'm going to tell you guys some nuggets that I took away from it. And hopefully, like, you guys can learn something from it or just sit back and listen, okay? So, boom. I got to the farmer's market, and typically it's like one or two of us soapers there. But it was a couple more of us there. It was like an extra person. And get this, he had an established audience. Like, people were like, oh, hey, I've been looking for you. And his booth was right next to my booth. So I'm just like, okay. But they were super, super nice. They helped me set up. And get this, this was the one particular time that I pretty much told, like, my team, the people who, like, normally help me at the farmer's market. I was like, y'all, I'm trying to do this on my own. Y'all could just chill. Y'all could have the day off because I want to learn how to, like, kind of do this on my own just in case I start traveling, you know, and y'all can't be with me. Man, listen. Y'all, the people were so nice to help me set up in the morning. Like, I kind of did everything on my own except when it came to me, like, putting up my tent and stuff. They were super, super nice. They were, like, extreme. There were so many gentlemen, like, helping me out and stuff. But then when it came to me, like, selling, like, we opening up shop and everything, I had somebody on this side, and then I had somebody on this side. And I don't know why, but it's kind of like I just got kind of nervous. And I didn't want to, like, force myself out there. So if I could just be honest, the first couple hours in the morning, I was getting no sales. Like, nobody was coming to my table. Nobody was coming to my booth. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? And it had even gotten to the point where the person that was on this side and the person that was on this side, they had partnered together. So if a customer was coming towards my table, this person on this side would stop them, you know, converse with them, try to get them to buy their stuff. And then they would tell them, oh, go check out that soap booth over there. He was talking about the other one. So they were typically like make their circle around, but they would skip me and then go to the soap person beside me because the guy recommended it. I was like, no. Okay, whatever. So I kind of feel some type of way. Long story short, I end up calling my go-to person. She's like my marketing person. In-person marketing person, not like online marketing person. I was like, I know I said you you got the day off, but can you please come help me? Because I was about to pack up and go, if I could be honest with y'all. Your girl was about to pack up and leave. I was about to call it a day. The people beside me, they were getting some sales, but I guess they weren't doing as well as they just didn't want to be patient and wait. Um, because this was my third show and people typically like come in like two hours after it starts or whatever. And we probably like were an hour and a half, hour and forty five minutes in and they were just like, Yeah, it's kinda slow, let's just go type stuff. So they started taking this their stuff down. I called my person. My person got there like around 12. 
and I kid you not, at that time, my person got there. And it's my mom. I'm talking about my mom. Typically, my mom helped me in my booth, and I had to tell my mom not to do it. I was like, Mom, you can sit this, and I'm going to try to do it on my own. And I called her. I was like, Mom, I'm finna go. I'm not getting no sales. Like, this not working for me. I feel so embarrassed. I just feel out of place. I don't know why I got this feeling, but I feel like before I could talk to a customer, these people are, like, stopping them in their tracks and, like, cutting me off or whatever. Like, and she was like, no, no, don't go. I'm on my way. I'm finna come help you. So, boom, she finally got there. It took her forever to get there. At least it felt like forever. It probably took Shorty, like, an hour, hour and a half to get there. Because I think she was working out when I called her or whatever. As soon as my mom got there, when I tell you, she was just like on it. She was like, what you need me to do? I gave her some cards. And she was getting on people. When I tell y'all, them people started boom, boom, boom. Coming to my table. And I'll never forget this one lady said, I had to come to your table. Your mom is your biggest cheerleader. She's over there advocating for you. So I just had to come and check you out. And I was like, yes. And anytime somebody would come to my table, they'll have the card in their hand. And I'm like, oh, okay, I see you talk to my mom. They'll be like, yes, we talked to your mom. And she said, this is that, that. So let me check out. What do you have, man, y'all? I was so happy. I was literally about to cry. Because when I tell you, your girl wasn't doing no sales. Your girl went from zero to some quick cash, for real. So, the main nugget that I got from it was this. Don't try and do it on your own. Like, it's okay if you need help. God didn't create us to, like, do life alone. And... Yeah, that's like the main nugget I got from it. Like, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't try to do everything on your own. This isn't a one-man show. It doesn't make you weak or, you know, make it seem like you don't know what you're doing just because you need help because there's definitely strength in numbers. And them, the people right here and the people right here, especially the one right here that was trying to play me, oh, my mama came up in the scene. We couldn't even buy a vow from him. I said, I'm going to go see my mama. But, yeah, it was so lit. So, that's, the like, one of the main nuggets I got from yesterday was don't be afraid to ask for help. And you don't have to try to do it on your own, especially when you have people willing to help you. Then the second nugget I got from that was, like, don't give up regardless of how it looks. Like, at least stick it out to the very end. Because let's just say I, I did leave early. Like some of the people did because they thought it was going to be a slow day. He ended up leaving early before me and I ended up against like some customers, like a lot more customers. And the other soap person was still in there, you know. And one thing I love about it was that people were just supporting everybody. Some people be thinking like, oh, it's competition. I don't look at people as competition. I just be like, OK, I'm here to make some money, get my brand out there, you know, things like that. So, yeah. Another nugget I learned is, like, definitely stick it out to, to the end, regardless of how you may feel or whatever, or regardless of what it may look like, because it definitely picked up in the evening time. And your girl made a pretty good, decent amount of money. I didn't hit my goal, because every farmer's market I go to, I don't ever want to have anything going back. I want to sell everything. So that's going to always be my goal. Um, Yeah. Trying to see what's another nugget I learned. Another nugget I learned. Other than those two. Those are like the main two I took away. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't try to do everything on your own. And always stick it out to the very end. Like from start to finish. Regardless of how it may look like. Man, when I tell y'all my mom was out there. Like it was so much fun. You should have just seen it. Like people. People. Man. It's like, and she definitely shifted, like, the atmosphere or whatever because I was, like, kind of nervous to talk to people or whatever. But it, I just, I don't know. It's like my personality was able to show once my mom got there. Then after my mom got there, my sister got there. So it was, it was really, really good. I'm not sure what you mean by what flavor nuggets, but I'm just dropping nuggets that I learned from doing my third farmer's market yesterday. I'm just telling some nuggets that I took away from doing it because at first I tried to do it on my own, but no. 
And so I was just telling the people, like, one of my major takeaways was that it's okay and it doesn't make you seem weak if, you know, you ask people for help. You don't have to try to do anything on your own because it's strength in numbers. And I was just telling people, like, how I went from no sales, like, zero sales to, like, dominating the outside floor for sure. So, yeah. I think that's a really, really good takeaway. If y'all have any advice that you want to give me pertaining to... I got a notebook. I'm here to take some notes. Y'all got some advice y'all want to give me. If you ever did like a, a show or anything, I'm all ears. I'm all open for it for sure. But yeah, I don't want to stay on here too long. But I just want to hop on here. <sighs> So, also, I wanted to tell you guys, in case you didn't know, we are in the process of rebranding. I'm super excited. When I tell you, um, me and my team been working on this for like a year. Literally like a year, because I think I started last October. Last September or October. So, it's definitely been a year. I'm super excited about the rebranding. We, we changed our names. We changed our logos. In case y'all can't tell by the name at the top of the page now, it's no more PGV soaps. Our name is Skin Peace by Danielle. And it's a luxury brand. I want to take away that home, you know, like that little at home crafts type feeling. And I want you guys to experience something luxury. Like my ultimate goal is to literally put a dent in Dove's pocket, right? Because a lot of my customers, they come from using dove and let's just be real dove is in soap they got that on they on their package and so i just want to help educate people you know help educate people and help take care of, help people understand how to take care of their skin because this is in soap and i'm gonna do a live on this y'all see that isn't that cute dove sensitive skin we're gonna do a dive into this probably today, no, tomorrow or sometime this week. One fourth moisturizing cream. Hmm. I'm so excited to see the ingredients. Oh, it says it's good for sensitive skin. We're gonna take a dive into this, to this double soap sometime this week so I can help you guys really understand what you're putting on your skin. So that's one of the major things that I wanna do and that my brain is focusing on. It's just like education of the other products that we're putting on our skin, right? Because the FDA allows the word natural to be so broad, right? So my definition of natural isn't your definition of natural. And our skin is one of the biggest organs that we have. And it's just really important that we just take proper care of it. So that's one of the main focus of Skin Peace by Danielle. It's a luxury brand. It's a family brand. It's soap and products that you can use from head to toe. And because we use ingredients that you can pronounce, you can use it on the entire family. Meg, will this throw off my pH balance? No, baby, it's natural. Meg, can I use this on my baby? Yes, boo, it's natural. Meg, I'm pregnant. Can I still use this? Is it safe on my skin? Baby girl, it's natural. So, yeah. That's all I got to say. Thank you guys for tuning in. Should I drink coffee tonight? Go ask Jesus. Ask Holy Spirit, can you drink coffee tonight? Yes, Dove does. If I could tell you real quick, Dove definitely made my skin dry as well. And I used a sensitive skin bar. This is the bar that I was using, the unscented one. And I got a real, real bad eczema breakout on the inner parts of my arm. And I really thank God that that happened because that's how I was able to birth my own soap business. So, yeah, that's how I found out about natural soaps. So... That's truly a Romans 828 moment. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and not the God according to his purpose. And that's me. So, yes, stay tuned for some exciting stuff. I know I barely be on Instagram, but I'm definitely trying to grow my um my following and my audience and everything on Instagram. So I'm trying to be a better steward over you guys. So I do apologize for the, like going in my A for a minute. But I'm as you can see, I'm really trying to get back on it. So make sure you guys like. Okay, make sure you like my video so you can see me post, all right? And who knows, when I get to a 1,000 followers, I'm definitely doing a giveaway. I can't wait to share with you guys everything we've been working on behind the scenes. Like, I'm super, super excited. So, yeah, 
Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye. How do you cut this out?